All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Today, we're going to look at, in a couple pieces, the perfect, most perfectest stock truck PCM for your LS swap. This one can do it all. It can do drive-by cable, it can do flex, it can do a 4080, it can do three bar, it can do everything. I've got one here, I'm gonna get another one there, and then we're gonna go to the board. And I'll cut this video out and bring you guys back when I'm not in the yard anymore. Uh, the remainder of this is going to be a junkyard video, so I'll bring you guys back shortly. Alright, so to go back over in a little bit more firm way of why I've done what I've done. What I took out there in the junkyard was a P59 and it was, I believe, a 462 service number. I have it sitting right here, actually. It was a 106 service number. So it was the first service number up there. Um, for the Dodge, the goal is to boost somewhere between 20 and 25 PSI on a 5.3, have it run 10s, um, Somebody threw out mid tens. I never said that. A ten nine 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 is a ten. Have it run tens, um, and that's it. So in order to do that, that's the goal. I, you have to set the goal first, and then you have to figure out what you need to achieve it. None of this may matter to you if you're doing a simple stock swap with a cam and some headers. And like literally, none of this matters to you. The only thing you need to care about is is there a correct segment for your trans if you're running a four L eighty. Not all OSs have a 4080 trans segment available for them. Um, you don't necessarily, this is more of an advanced class, okay? If you're just putting in something with a cam and it already has a 4080, you, you pulled it out of a three quarter ton or a van or whatever, then you're good to go, carry on. If you want to run flex fuel with the content sensor, you can run flex fuel without a content sensor and simply tune for it but I wouldn't recommend that because flex fuel E85 tends to test anywhere from E90 to like E40, depending on the day and the month and the year. So the content sensor is a good deal. If you're only running like 15 PSI, a two bar map on a 411 processor is fine. It doesn't matter that you can't do three bar. You don't have to go scour the earth. If you're running drive-by wire, you don't have to worry about these specific service numbers that do drive-by cable. There's no reason not to do drive-by wire, especially if you have something where you can just bolt a pedal in like I did in my C10. Now on my D100, I made it easier on myself on the interior by choosing to run drive-by cable. But it's actually easier to tune drive-by wire and I prefer that most of the time. I just simply prefer to hook up a cable and the D100. So, to recap all of this, I'm going to tell you guys what these can do, what they can't do, and then we're going to cover what I did to build myself the perfect, most robust, absolutely coolest stock PCM that you can build for a Gen 3 engine. So the 411 processor, these come in 99 to 02, and somebody will come along and be like, oh, it's a service number four. It doesn't matter. The hardware inside is the same. They're all 512 kilobyte processors. They all have the same limitations. And you can slap any OS on, like this Tahoe OS, you can slap that onto a 99 PCM that's not technically a 411, um, and it'll work fine, and it won't know the difference. So... Every single one of them can do drive-by cable or drive-by wire without doing anything else. If you're 411, if you pulled something from a 2001 Tahoe that had a drive-by wire pedal and you want drive-by cable, just have your tuner or tune it yourself, go in there and turn it off. You, you don't have to do a single other thing. Um, they're all native, or if you want drive-by wire and you have drive-by cable, just go in there and enable it. It's not, there's nothing extra needed they can all do it natively as is. Flex fuel was a little bit harder back then. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago now. Um, the only OS that I found that has flex, that does 80, has 80 segments, 
is this 122-16125 OS. And it, the one that I found is out of a Tahoe. Any L59 um, OS will, ha will have flex enabled on it. And from there, you just segment swap your way to victory. Segment swap an ADE into it. You segment swap a drive-by cable, and you're done. Carry on. It can read a three bar map, but it cannot do it with the Flex OS. So with the Flex, you're limited to two bar. And that's fine because there's a lot more resolution on the two bar. Um, and if you're not doing more than 14 PSI, it doesn't matter. If you're not doing any boost at all, you don't even care about this. You don't even need to, and you need to be honest with yourself right up front. What is your goal? To get something in and have it run and drive and be reliable and have overdrive and do boost someday? Someday's not gonna come. So just don't worry about this. Just forget it. So moving on to the P59, which is what I'm running on the Dodge or will be running on the Dodge, depending on what order I upload these videos. Um, only certain service numbers have the drive-by cable, have the idle air control driver chip in them. Um, these are the service numbers that have it. You can add the idle air control chip to a PCM that doesn't have it and it will work, but the easier thing to do is just find a drive-by cable. And they're common in vans. All the vans from like, well actually all the vans from 03 to like 06 are drive-by cable. So that's the easy, and that's the best swap to get in my opinion. You, you probably get a 6 liter, you definitely get a 4L80 if it's a 2500 8 lug. Um, they're really common, they pooped out millions of them. It's just really easy. Flex fuel is slightly trickier, but not so hard. This OS 1258763 is the most versatile OS I've found overall. It can do everything. It can do three bar, it can do drive by cable, it can do a 4L80 segment, it can do a flex segment. It can do everything that you wanna do this was available in 4.3 liter stuff. It was available in 8.1 liter stuff. It has an everything in between. It can do absolutely everything. This is the best OS to load into your P59. If you wanna do all the fancy stuff, I have to remind you again, if you're not doing the fancy stuff, don't worry about it. Ignore this video, go watch Scooby-Doo. Um, all of them have a three bar OS. Everything that I've opened for a P59 has a three bar OS. And some of all of these have real-time tuning where you can make changes and then you stop and load it in. Not a big deal to me, but it is available if you want it. So now we're going to go into a lengthy, long, drawn-out portion where I show you what I did to switch, switch and swap and do everything I could to get the ultimate OS with the ultimate segments that I want for the Dodge. You can follow along and do this exactly. Or you can like skip to the end of the video, jump to the comment section like a bunch of you have probably already done and just ask me dumb questions. But if you stick around, I promise you will see exactly how I've done it. So, see you in a moment. All right, so step one for this was to go up to my C10 Darrow, which is running a P59. I took my OBD Link MX, which will be linked down below, and PCM Hammer, I'm using uh, version 14, it works fine. I know there's a newer version, I don't care. I like to use the versions that I know work, unless they change something that I care about, but so far they haven't. So anyway, um, using PCM Hammer 14, I did a full read of Daryl's PCM onto my laptop. I named it Daryl Tune, I saved it, I passed through the warning it had been powered up for more than 10 seconds. You can see it goes through its deal here. And what this will do, when you save an HP Tuners file, Daryl's tuned with HP Tuners, when you save an HP Tuners file, it gives you a file extension of HPT. However, when you read with PCM Hammer, it gives you a file extension of .bin. And that's what I wanted. And that's what I need to be able to use with HP Tuners. Or that's what I need to be able to use with uh, PCM Hammer. So I wanted to write Daryl's entire PCM to my new PCM. And in order to do that, I needed a .bin file. So reading this with PCM Hammer is what enables that. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end here, and we'll move on. 
All right, we got a read complete here. For the next step in my illusion, we'll be moving back to my house to the new PCM from the junkyard from the S10 Blazer. So let's head there. So back in the house, hook to the new PCM. We want to write entire, or whatever it said, an entire clone. So we're gonna copy Daryl Toon, not Ben, right over top of the 4.3 liter S10 stuff that's there currently. You see it goes through its little thing, kernel upload, blah, blah, blah. It requests some different information from the PCM. This is a long process, especially on the one megabyte stuff. It takes like 15 minutes. It checks the current against what is, so it checks you know, the OS against what is, the transcendment against what is. Um, apparently they had the same OS in them to start with, so no big deal there. But we'll go ahead and skip to the end of this as well. I think you get the idea. All right, so you see we're complete. We have a complete clone. And now that we're 12 minutes into this video where nobody's watching, I'm going to tell you why I did that specifically. I did that so that I can tune it with HP tuners and use the credits I've already paid for. As far as HP tuners is concerned, this is Daryl's PCM. So what I'm going to do now is go over and actually verify that inside of HP tuners. Um, we'll go ahead and look it up, open it up. And then once that opens up, we'll pull the file up that I've just copied. I forget what I called this file, but something to do with it being for the D100. Or no, I have to do a read. I have to do a read to get in into HP tuners. So this is still the S10 PCM. I have my HP tuner set up to show me the last file I worked on. So we're going to do a read in HP Tuners. And if you notice, the VIN is now the same and the operating system is now the same as Daryl. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end here. So at the end, I save it. I think at this point I actually went ahead and made a folder for the D100. I don't remember. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and, apparently I'm, I've lost my mind and I'm pondering here. I'm doing this as a voiceover like five days later, so so apparently my brain is working again. I looks like I called it Daryl Toon Copy. And what I wanted to do was go in and verify that it was a complete copy. You see I have two bar real-time tuning. Uh... I wanted to verify, I don't know why I even looked at that. Oh, I wanted to verify that I can do changes here, like I said. So I just took 1% out of the VE table everywhere. Because any change will require a license if you don't have it, which apparently I have it because it just saved. So I have a perfect copy of Daryl's PCM, which still isn't quite what I need, right? So. We're going to go back to PCM Hammer now. Open that up. So now what I want to do is actually change this OS to the OS that will do all of the things. I have a license for this PCM now as far as HP Tuners is concerned. But I need, a light, I need the OS that will do all the things I want to do. So from the drop down, you can write OS Calibration and Boot which is what changes the OS for you. And this again avoids HP Tuners credits. I can do this in HP Tuners, but I'd have to license the new OS and I don't wanna do that. So in order to do that, I didn't have the correct OS. I'll upload all this stuff. Actually, these files, these finished files are uploaded at the Driveway Engineer Facebook group now. Um, that is not the correct folder that I went into and I spent a bunch of time looking for it and couldn't find it because it's the wrong year. The year you're looking for is 2004. So now I'll find the one that I want because I'm in the right year. Everybody makes mistakes, right? That's why pencils have erasers. So what I'm going to start with is an L59, I think is what I chose to go with um, because I know I can segment swap to an 80. I want to make sure that I have flex enabled to start. So I'm going to write OS parameters and boot. And I'm going to use this L59 
uh, tune, which should give me the flex enabled from start. And then I know that there's a 4L80 segment for this OS already. And I know that my IAC drivers are present. So we'll go ahead and skip to the end of this. I think you guys have seen it enough in this video. You know what's happening. All right, so that's wrapping up now. It's done. Ding! I like Martha Stewart here. I'm going to halt the kernel, turn it off. You don't have to save anything. I think I was sitting there dumbfounded waiting to try to save something. You don't have to save anything. It's all in the PCM. Um, from there, we can head back over to HP Tuners whenever my little pea brain catches up with the fact that that's what I need to do now. All right, so with HP Tuners open, I think I was like doing my job and like two other things. I had three computers up here open that day, so I think that accounts for some of the lag you guys are seeing here and there. Again, looks like my brain it's not caught up just yet so I want to do a read of the PCM again to make sure that the OS change took and make sure that I still have a licensed PCM here so I'll go ahead and uh, skip to the end of this real quick so that's done we'll go ahead and save this as something although again I'm probably not looking at it I probably have my back to it nope it looks like I was paying attention Daryl OS swap. That's what it is. It is a Daryl file with the OS swapped. So now we can go up, make sure that our changes took, right? Um, see, it's still calibrated as a 6 liter, which is weird because I downloaded a 5.3 file. Um, I wanted to look and see if it seemed like the IAC was enabled and it seems to be it, all the tables seem to be there they're populated um so from there i just wanted to go on and uh make sure that the tps seemed to be available i want to check the flex fuel to see if that's if the tables are there if it's enabled um I know on some other platforms the drop downs actually do stuff, but on HP Tuner, or on GM, they don't. So I have Flex enabled. That's good. That's what I want. Um, I'm going to go to my transmission. It looks like it's a 4L60. I got my VATS. It's on. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to do the save to make sure that I'm still licensed. And it looks like I am. So, all right, so one thing that I wanted to show you guys was how in the system to make sure that your drive-by cable is enabled on these P59 uh, PCMs. If you go to the system tab here, and platform type is GMT800, so under system options, you see electronic throttle control, and GMT 800, a zero means it is not fitted, as you can see here. Zero, not fitted, one fitted. So this will be a one, it was a one from Daryl, because Daryl's electronic throttle. Changing this to a zero makes it rely on all the uh, normal drive-by cable stuff in the engine tab, the airflow tab. So that's how you do that. I want to give a shout out to Matt Happel and all the other people who helped him, all the people on Gearhead EFI who provided the bins, uh, to the gentleman who does PCM Hammer, uh, you guys, they, they made all this possible. So hopefully you found this helpful, hopefully you've liked and subscribed, and hopefully I'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer. Thanks guys, see ya.